Doctor, an unidentified flying object heading towards our current direction. What? Put it on screen! Hello, everybody! You ready to have a good time? I know I am! Cause it's pretty fast, there's pizza! Or what? You what? Uh, one button. Uh, here we go. Him again. Blast that angel out of the sky. Attention, all panic. We have a cold flu. I repeat, a cold flu. This is not a cold. All panic. Get that doctor back. And someone get me an Oreo frappuccino. Summit has already landed on the ship. I can see that. Kill him. <laughs> now let's begin. Yeah. If you must do something done right, do it yourself. Prepare the egg weaver! Oh, the egg weaver is not finished yet. Is the Chaos Emeralds installed? Oh, yes, but. Then it's ready! <laughs> ha My scanner indicates that there's a Chaos Emerald in the ship! Good work, Tails! Let's do it to. Glad you finally showed up! Well, I can't miss the party, so what are we gonna do this time? Spin the bottle, tic tac toe, or whack the egg man? Figure you pick the ladder. <laughs> Ha 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 
Yes, yes, I did it. I finally defeated that blasted blue hedgehog. Huh? Oh, come on. And it's game over for you. Shut up, Hikushin! Ormot, what's going on? Ormot, Cubot! Uh, Ormot, respond! Huh? No! And that was the last time I saw Tails. I tried to stay positive, was thinking that he is fine. Until I finally received his message. I've been traveling across every single dimension just to find him. Wait. Why not open the portal to wherever Tails is at and just bring him back to your own place? Oh, believe me, I tried. Here, take a look at this. Yeah. It's as if some sort of force isn't allowing me to get to him. Strange, isn't it? like I got a lot of work on my hands. It might take me a while to figure out what the problem is. Can't you just wave your stick and fix everything? Sonic screwdriver, Sonic. And no, that's not how it works. Yes, it can be able to analyze any energy frequencies, replicate them in a certain way, 
I'm able to open electrical doors and fix minor errors and glitches. But the problem is the warp ring is perfectly fine. I didn't detect no errors, no energy flux, nothing. But if you're saying that the warp ring isn't working in your favor, then there must be something else wrong with it. I'm going to have to analyze it a little bit more, dig into its coding, see the issues you're having. But it might take me a while. Days? Maybe weeks. Well, that's great. I just hope Tails is alright. No worries, Sonic. I'm pretty sure he will be fine. Meantime, you can come by and visit me anytime you want just to see the progress. Just, uh, next time, please take off your shoes when you're in the house. I don't want to attract any mud and dirt. Thanks for the offer, kid. Please, call me Jermaine. We're Jam for short. Nice to meet you, Jam. Name's Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. But you already knew about that, didn't you? More than you know. I'm going downstairs to uh, analyze it a little bit more. Maybe I could be able to solve your warp brain situation. Sweet! <laughs> uh, hey, uh, do you have any chill dogs? I kind of skipped lunch. I feel like I've been delaying this review for a very, very long time. And there is some reasons to that. One of them is because of the pandemic. It threw a wrench to my entire plan and I had to like delay it due to, <laughs> well, life changing happenings and such. The second reason is because how everything was turned out. I had the script down. All I needed was the voices. But unfortunately, the voices seemed to take a little bit longer than I anticipated, so that also made a major delay. Not just self, always plan things ahead of time. But the third reason is because I honestly have a hard time of discussing why I actually enjoyed this game in the first place. Without sounding a little to buy it. I, in fact, I really enjoyed Sonic Mania. I know that some people would say otherwise, mostly because it's not their game that they're looking for. But when you look back at it, you kind of think of, you know, this thing's so bad. I mean, for crying out loud, Christian Whitehead, the main man who not only remade Sonic CD on iOS phones and on consoles, but also Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And I wish there was Sonic 3 and Knuckles. There was even plans for that on phones, but sadly, Sega didn't want that to happen. Then you got the company that helped him, Headcanon, which was led by Christian Whitehead's partner, Stealth, which he also helps with the development himself. And Pagonia West Games, I don't even know these guys. And I'm yet so curious about it because they did a wonderful job of helping them make the game of Sonic Mania. <laughs> it, it so baffled me that the people that care about Sonic the Hedgehog themselves was the people that grew up with Sonic the Hedgehog themselves. Like the title said, by the Mania for the Mania. Or, if you want to be more directly, by the fans for the fans. Sonic Mania is released on August 23rd, 2017 with so much high praise, so much so that they decided to release Sonic Mania Plus years later. He added DLC or to the game itself. And not only that, also added in two characters, Mikey the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel into the modern age. If you don't know who those two are, and honestly, I can't blame you. Well, they're basically two characters lost after the Sega Sonic Arcade game, where you have to use this ball to control the characters by rolling it. 
the faster you roll it, the faster the characters will be. Since then, they only appeared in comics with different interpretations and some thumbnails left and right. Until they breathe to return in this game. But you know what else is surprising? Sonic Mania Plus is a physical release too. Which, <laughs> funny story, I thought Sonic Mania was going to be a physical release game as well as digitally released. But, uh, I didn't realize it was digitally. I was looking at GameStop stores, any stores in general, and I finally learned that, hey, it's not a physical release game. Yeah, so I was a little bit disappointed. And since I really want to try out the game, I decided to buy a digital. And then after two years later, they decided to release it physically with the DLC port that I just mentioned. First Sonic, then Cuphead, and then Crash, and now. What's that? Crash Bandicoot, it's about time it's gonna be on the Switch? It down. Am I getting punished because I was being impatient? Oh, on the bright side, at least it's my favorite 2D Sonic game of all time. Fair yet, I claim this better than the Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Bear in mind though, I didn't grow up with the Sega Genesis, so if I sound a bit negative to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, just remember, this is coming from a guy that has grown up from the PS1 era with Crash Bandicoot, and just became a Sonic fan years later on in the 3D era of Sonic. Yes, it's a good game, don't get me wrong. I will admit that. But I feel like it's a bit overrated at the same time. But you see, that's just my opinion. If you like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But you got to admit that Sonic Mania did their homework correctly on how to perfect a 2D Sonic game after so many years from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. After releasing other different interpretations of a 2D Sonic game like Sonic Rush, like Sonic Advance, and Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2 until 2017 where they brought the people that knows the 2D Sonic games well, and they even perfected it in the car with the classic. That's how amazing that is. But to delve a little bit more deeper, we'll have to talk about the game a little more. So, let's delve in Sonic Mania. Let's the dish. The story takes place after Sonic bringing Knuckles, Sonic and Tails manage to save Knuckles' home. But then, a weird dimensional energy disturbance appeared over the horizon, thus causing Angel Island to crash into the water yet again. Sonic and Tails decide to investigate what is going on, but apparently Eggman also notices and beat them to the punch, and discovered what caused it to crash into the water once again. Introducing the Phantom Group. A gem that is capable to warp reality with the user's mind, as well as feeding false information. Think of it like a um, Mysterio, except his illusions are actually real. When the egg robots not only grab the Phantom Ruby, transforming him and all the other five egg robots into the hard boiled heavies, but also transport Sonic Tails and Sadly, Knuckles, who was knocked out in the process, into the most disturbing zone ever. The one that every fan fears for their very lives. One that is so annoying to be used so many times. In fact, I've been used like six times in a row. A zone. Green Hell Zone. Okay, I know that um, they were rehashing older levels, but why Green Hill Zone? Why not Neo Green Hill Zone? Something to include of Eggman trying to control the world. I mean, for crying out loud, Eggman should know that Sonic is able to run fast, and Green Hill Zone is an area that you can run fast. Well, I'm just 
saying. I'm just saying. So with reality in, in this term, is the three trios join forces to find the Phantom Ruby, grab it from Eggman's clutches, defeat the Egg Robos, and of course Dr. Eggman, and save reality from disaster. And that's it for all the stuff that we already know. So how about we discuss the new ones, like Sonic's new ability, the Drop Dash. Fun fact about the Drop Dash. This ability was actually part of the prototype of Sonic 3 and Knuckles before the Instant Shield was created. But due to limitations and time constraints, they decided to scrap the idea altogether. All the comments, all the callback, but it's great to see this as part of the moveset for Sonic Training. So, what does the Drop Dash do, you might say? Well, as the title says, it's basically kind of like the Spin Dash. Just press the jump button while in midair and Sonic will rev up in the ball. Once he lands on the ground, he will gain a boost of speed. A small boost of speed, to be exact. While yes, you can curl yourself to a ball and use the speed of much than you gain, and, like in Sonic the Hedgehog, or use the spin dash, like in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the drop dash is actually a lot more useful than people give credit for. So let's give an example. Let's say... You want to keep the speed of momentum going, but you don't want to use the spin dash because it will pause that speed. Or you don't want to curl yourself into a ball because it might slow you down a little bit. Well, if you use this drop dash, it can actually save your life. You can use it to gain the extra speed that you needed, or you can use it to get the best time. Or you can even save yourself from an incoming bandit that's three feet in front of you and if you don't react quick enough you might get hurt. I actually love this idea and it's no brainer why a return in the Sega Ages section with Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Even return in the <coughs> Sonic Forces. Yeah, I will talk a little bit about that game in the future. Uh, Mantras return like the speed shoes, invisibility, and the shields. Even the return of the elemental shields with a new twist. Each of them has their own effects the level itself than just a simple special jump or immunity. For example, if you grab a fire shield, you can literally set the wood or even the oil to flames. Or if you have the electric shield, you'll be magnetized to the ceiling due to the metal. The only power-up that it has the least effect is the bubble shield. Sure, the bubble shield protects you from drying, but other than that, I can't say anything much. Though if I remember correctly, it does protect you from blue harmful chemicals, but since you tend to, you know, avoid them, you wouldn't know that until you test it out. I wish they would do more than that, maybe like uh, you protect yourself from losing green bit by bit in the smog, or act like a cooling mechanism if you touch the hottest parts of the desert. Something cool with it. Uh, but, ah oh well, it is what it is. But the interesting thing that they decided to return is the blue ring monitor which appeared in Knuckles Chaotic, which, uh, Sega, I hope you are going to be releasing this game soon. I really hope to get the chance to play this game. Anyways, if you collect a lot of rings and you get hit by the enemy, you can lose all of your rings, and I do mean all of them. Sometimes it falls into the level, other times they can fall into the foreground or background, depending on how many rings you collect, that is. But if you manage to get the blue ring monitor, all your rings will turn into big golden rings, which holds around 10 rings per ring. Say that seven times fast. But be warned, this is a one-time deal, so if you get hit again, it will turn back into the normal golden rings that you always collect. So be aware of that! And speaking of which, yes, I did mention that you can be able to play as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and of course I mentioned Mighty and Ray. So how about we discuss them? 
Tails is yet again the easy mode of this game with the ability to fly, which makes things a little bit easier for exploration, while Knuckles acts like the hard mode with the gimp jump, but also the ability to glide and climb up walls with different routes to take to boot. But Mighty and Ray on the other hand has their own unique experience. Mighty plays similar to Sonic, but has this hammer stump, as well as his shells to protect him from spikes, so he kind of acts like a safety net sometimes, or finding secret goodies with a stomp or even his uh, alternative pathway. But Ray. Ray the Flying Squirrel. Alright, imagine Cape Mario in this game, and you have the most broken character ever. Okay, he's not entirely broken since you can get hurt by Batnik if you just like, you know, fly into them. And you won't glide again if you let go of the jump button to curl yourself into a ball. However, with good enough practice, you can easily beat it without confronting a signal bad neck or even touching the ground. I feel like we're missing someone. I mean, we've got Sonic, we've got Tails, we've got Knuckles, and Mighty and Ray are playable, but there's something missing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where's Amy Rose? You know, Rosie the Rascal? The character that appeared in Sonic CD? The girl with the Pico Pico hammer? What happened to her? I know she got her references in games and appearance in Sonic Mania Adventures shorts, but I feel like they could have added her to the game somehow. Maybe using her peel ads and using the spin dash from Sonic CD with the little twist with her Pico Pico hammer, like a double jump or a double attack. Or maybe the hammer jump that was introduced in Sonic Advance. Hey, if a modder can make it work, I believe a game developer can as well. Then again, if this game sells well, which technically already did, and the team is willing to do so, we might get a sequel with more characters in new worlds. You might never know. If I have one word to describe the presentation, it's... It's brilliant. This has so much fluent and crisp animation. I mean, look at this! Sonic has more animations than Sonic 3 ever did. The world is so bright and colorful, and the speed, oh, there's so much of it! But what is even more surprising is that it's not meant to be a Sonic game for the Genesis, and in fact, this next Sonic game for the Sega Saturn, which it definitely shows. For the longest time, there was spin-offs of Sonic games, but never a main game until Sonic 3D Blast, a year after the death of the like a Saturn. And these guys decided to make their own, and <laughs> this is the result of it. Sure, some of the transitions was a bummer before they did the Mania Plus thing. They simply faded to black before the next stage begins, and honestly, none of Sonic's boss is plain easy. I mean, the first two are good challenges in themselves, but the final phase? They're literally just running away from a spike wall. Not something to be proud of if you ask me. Um, at least the plus edition, you have some better transitions and a bigger challenge with Metal's post metallic madness overload transformation. Oh man, I miss Sonic Heroes. Before I discuss it even further, though, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. While there is a good chunk of cool levels, there were only Four new levels and eight old levels. Now, to some people, you might say it, that's a bad thing, and I kinda see why. Saying that they're using nostalgia, though, isn't overstating it, as they do change things up in order to feel different, but respectful of the levels at the same time. Take Green Hills, though, for example. Sure, it's the same level as before Green Hills, Green Grass. Loopy loops, yada yada yada, but a few new loops and hells. But once you go to Act 2, things became a bit different. There are zip lines that bring you into the life to the land. Chemical plants don't come out of the original levels, feel like the new stuff, like the chemicals that you can interact. 
green chemicals that make you bounce higher, while blue chemicals just make you bounce. There are those DNA chemicals that make awesome elevators and so much more. Ah oh, man, I'm so geeked out about it. Would I rather have new levels instead of recurring ones? Yes, obviously. But it never ruined my enjoyment for the game. In fact, it kind of encourages me to try out the older levels once more, as find all the references of the level design on the older games. Yes, even Sonic CD's Metallic Man. I still despise that level. And the music. Oh, honestly, what can I say about it? I love it. In fact, I love Stupid Yopolis' theme, I love Chemical Plants' theme, even Titanic Monarch. I love Crush Forties, but he loves Man, he's so good! I even decided to use the, the intro part as the name theme for my channel. I love endless possibilities and reach to the stars, but this, this is art. Even did remixes to the older levels too, like Lava Reef. Hydro City? From Sonic 3 and Knuckles Remix for this game. Which got me wondering if they ever plan to do a Sonic 3 and Knuckles port, will they bring back G Lopes to do the remixes for all the levels? Now that would be amazing if they did. Take it, write that down, put them on the line, do it now! There are a few moments where the game suddenly glitched on me. One of the best examples is actually the part where, I, in my livestream, I was playing as Tails. The magician summons the boss for Act 1 of Dusty Desert. Then all of a sudden he transformed into vultures and the next thing I knew, I was thought to lock. I don't know how it happened. Maybe there was an error. Or maybe there was... Or I did something like this to make it happen. I just... It just happened. <laughs> The next glitch I discovered is when I was playing Green Hill Act 2's boss during the Encore Mower Live, and I was in the level complete screen, then all of a sudden I was killed by a capsule along with my partner, and I end up back to the checkpoint and I have to face the boss again. And even though that they did a patch for that, there was another thing that caught my attention. Sonic Mania Plus sometimes doesn't play the music? I don't know how that happens at all. But I didn't mind this issue as it did not hinder my enjoyment for this game at, at all. In fact, I just laugh it up and still play it and didn't face them again. So, glitch or not, the game is fun when you're having fun. Okay, seriously, do I really need to say it? Do I really need to spoil the extra of this game? I do? Alright. Super fun. There we go. Pack your bags, boys, we're out of here. To get Super Sonic in is the same case as Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Find Warp Ring, jump in, and are thrown into the special stage. But this is vastly different from Sonic 1's luck base or Sonic 2 memorization or Sonic CD hunting that UFO or waste your chance or even do or fail in Sonic 3. No. Then actually combined all of that into one. To get the Chaos Armor, you must track down the UFO. Sounds simple, yes, but this is where things get a bit tricky. You are automatically running through the stage, and you cannot stop until you ran in out of rings or, you know, falling off a cliff. So all you can do in this special stage 
the spear left to right, jump, collect rings to the back your stuff more time, blue orb to gain more speed, and pray that you don't accidentally fall off the cliff or run out of rings and lose your chance of getting the castle. If that ever happens, you have to do the entire thing all over again. Once you get all the chaos emeralds, however, and once you grab a certain number of rings, huh? For a moment there, I thought the song will. Are you kidding me? You get the super forms, which everyone has it at this point. Tails, knuckles, even mighty and ray. So tails and super form. Feels like it's missing the flicky. I mean, it's great to see Tails in his super form, but the flicky is not part of that super form. I kind of missed that. But what you might be wondering, if, the, if that is the special stages, then what about the Blue Sphere stages? Aren't they going to have some appearance? Some love? Yes, they did actually, as bonus stages. If you manage to grab 25 rings and jump through the portal, Above the checkpoint that you pass through, you're thrown in, you get set the blue sphere stages. Once you grab a certain number of blue spheres, you win the game and you earn yourself a medal. Back to the lock of them, you unlock some cool stuff, like the instant shield from the Sonic 3 and Knuckles for those Sonic 3 and Knuckles fans. Or the peel out that appeared in Sonic CD for the Sonic CD fans, too. And Mania's version of Blue Sphere stages. They're a lot harder than you might think. Green will turn into blue if touch, purples can teleport you, and just like in Song 3's bonus stages, it will be chaotic the longer you stay in there, so keep that in mind. And of course, debug mode, which I'm kinda glad it exists. It's fun to mess around with it, and actually kinda helps you to get the well, metals a lot faster. I know, Circuit, I use debug mode. It was an option, and I decided to take it. I could do it the proper way, but that would take me forever to do it. Not to mention, it's a little bit frustrating to do the blue sphere stages because you had to grab 25 rings and jump through the portal. If you lose those 25 rings, you have to click another 25 rings and if you miss your chance in the blue sphere stages, you have to find another checkpoint with those 25 rings you have in mind. And I, like I keep on saying, if you lose the 25 golden rings, you have to find more rings and ah! Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Whew. And Jason. So it begins to make you wonder if they ever plan to make their own Super Mario Maker except with Sonic Hedgehog, of course. You know, having the players to make their own 2D Sonic. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing that. It would be pretty cool to see it. If you have a friend over and you want to play Sonic Mania, but you don't want to have your friend to play as Tails to make it a little bit boring for them, don't worry, there is an option for that. Two player mode. Basically put, it's the race between you and your friend to see who is the fastest to complete the level by playing either of these five characters. Just to uh, make sure nobody picks Ray for obvious reasons. But if there's a tie, you fight among each other with the Poyo Poyo Tournament! How crazy is that? And then there's also time attack. Simply put, Dragon rights to see who is the fastest and see if anyone can beat your time worldwide. It's not my thing, but hey, if you like to break about you being the fastest, then go ahead. But then we got to talk about Song of Mania Plus's new addition, Encore mode. Think Encore Mode as the hard mode for Sonic Mania. There are some minor changes like the color alterations to give it a different theme, as well as a different level layouts for fighting the wall frames, and you can actually be able to play as Sonic and his friend. 
them. What? You see, instead of using the lives as full well, life, the characters are now the lives. You can only collect five of them. And once you die, you are replaced with a different character in the order. And just like in the regular mode, where if you get hit by an enemy and you pay no rings and you ran out of lives, you get a game over. There is a way to get these characters out. You can destroy the monsters that contains one of the characters, or you can actually collect 50 rings, hit the checkpoint, jump to the portal, and instead of treating yourself with the blue sphere stages, you're treating yourself with none other than a pinball minigame. While yes, you can only play as the two characters that you have on screen, you can actually switch things up by hitting the monsters that either give you a random character that you already have, or it can actually swap the character's order in general. Which, in theory, is very a useful tool. Let me repeat myself. In theory, sometimes it gives you a character that you don't want when you hit the monitor, other times you might accidentally hit the monitor which swaps into a different character, which in turn, you can't be able to go through an area like say a knuckles route with a Sonic character which you accidentally swap it to. So in other words, you have to go through a different route which actually makes things a little bit slower. In other words, it can be a useful tool, but it can also be a hindrance. So be aware of that. And yes, there is a secret ending if you collect all seven emeralds. And yes, the special stages are like the mania mode. However, they're a lot harder to find and to get them. So if you want to them, you must be very explorative and be good on these special stages. The only bad thing is that while I do enjoy the new characters and the Encore mode idea, we did not do anything well, new to the level design wise for Encore. And in fact, they're basically the same theme. The only difference is the ring placements, color swaps, and the inclusion of Angel Island. They treat this mode as an extra story where you start to, to feel like it, but it, in the end, felt included to avoid another connection to another game, for exponentially good reason too. Ah well, at least you can still play as Might and Ray all together again. But what I explained to you only pales in comparison to all the references, to all the games from Sonic's history, to other games on the Genesis. Memes come true like Knuckles and Knuckles meme, to references to the past like the catchphrase Genesis does. From the Genesis games like Street of Rage, even the reference from Sonic's 25th anniversary, which is uh, pretty bad. Simply point, there was this buzzing that came around because they were having technical issues and <laughs> they decided to roll with it. That actually appeared in one of the bosses. I'm not gonna say which one, but it appeared in one of the bosses. That, that is so amazing. I wish I could talk more about this game, but it would take me forever to list all of it. I do want to make this video longer than it needs to be. I, it's a love letter to the people who played the Sonic games and are fans to the Sonic games, and I love it. There's so much. I love about this game. And ever since I played Sonic the Hedgehog from the very start from the livestream to now, I think this is the best 2D Sonic game I ever played. And I hope that they get a chance to make a Sonic Mania 2 with these people. They probably will. But of course newcomers will get confused if they don't get the references or understand the Sonic games from the past. It will probably fly over their heads if they didn't play them, or understand them. Which, think about it, this isn't meant to be for newcomers, but for the fans from the Genesis era. Which, that leads to its problem there. It's a good game, but I understand that many people probably would get confused with the references if they didn't know the 
game series itself. As a Sonic fan, I recommend anyone to get this game and try it out. Sonic has a very long journey. I'm so excited for Sonic's 30th anniversary. Maybe we can be able to get a Sonic Mania 2. Maybe an adventure remake. Maybe something new, revolutionary. Or we can go back to the boost formula. Regardless at this point, I am so excited of what Sega's plans are for this upcoming year. So those are my thoughts. What about yours? Do you enjoy the game or do you not enjoy it? Place your comments down below. Till then, this is your mind from Jamfrog35 saying stay jamtastic and have yourself a great time. Excelsior!